Good morning everybody and welcome to our live interactive sunrise safari from the northeast corner of South Africa. My name is Tristan and on camera today I've got Senzo and hopefully we're going to have a wonderful morning with all of you. As I mentioned it is live so that means that you can interact with us on hashtag safari live on Twitter or on the YouTube chat. Now there is definitely a front blowing in as we saw with those clouds just now. There's this cold, cold, cold wind that is up this morning. It is not as windy as it was last night. Last night it really blew something ridiculous. It was howling and it's brought about this cloud cover that is now slowly but surely edging its way in from the eastern horizon. So I think we're going to have a fairly chilly morning. It's probably going to get cloudier and cloudier as we go. I don't think we get, that's going to clear up too much. So it's probably going to be a little bit on the grey side this morning. But it should also mean that there might be a little bit more activity for longer period. Hopefully we'll find that the cats and various other creatures are still moving around given that it's quite dark or still and it is quite cool so hopefully that's going to be the case now Taylor's off to go and see if she can't find little Tumba and see if he's still around from last night's escapades and well we had lions making some noise earlier we couldn't hear exactly where but I'm going to go and just check the northern boundary see if there's not any sign of the Inkahuma pride coming back this area and that's the plans for this morning. After that, well, I think I'll probably pop into the hyena den at some stage and see if that's not active. We haven't been there for a few days with all the cats taking the st well, stealing the limelight. We're going to try and see if we can't head over to the den as well at some point. So that's the plans. Hopefully it will be a successful one. Hopefully we will find what we are looking for. It certainly has been an incredible week so far. We've had the most incredible sightings. And so, well, we can't complain if it is a quiet one. Now, something that is not quiet, even if our drive will be, is the Miss McCurdy. And I'm sure she's rearing to go and rearing to say hello. So let's go across and see what she's up to this morning. Not too much just yet. We're actually just admiring the beautiful skyline and, well, the last of the leaves on the trees. But they should blow off with all of the wind that we've had today. But it really has been an absolutely fantastic start. Lots of roaring, but I'm sure Tristan has already told you with that. Good morning. My name is Taylor, and on camera with me today is Sebastian. And, well, we're hoping to find all sorts of wonderful things out here. What we'll see, we're not sure. We'll have to, well, see what footprints are left on the ground. But remember, this is live. This is happening right now. It's interactive, so send through your questions. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Now, something that you all don't know is that I smell like petrol this morning. It's absolutely delicious. It's my favorite smell in the whole world. Yeah, poor, poor Seb's downwind of me, too. I was trying to top Wendy up with uh, some fuel. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I managed uh, to drop the jerry can and then the nozzle sprayed f uh, fuel everywhere. So I'm covered in it. It's so great. I even got to drink some of it. Such actually, you know, coffee. You don't need coffee when you can have a, a cup of uh, petrol. It's very nice. So that was an interesting start to the morning. No hyenas coming through raiding camp, although I don't know if I would have heard them. Uh, the wind was sure gusting quite hectically last night. Uh, it even blew a bird into the bathroom. That's why I don't know if it flew into one of the bathrooms to try and seek shelter, but it was a little flycatch. It's now still sitting there. I did try to rescue it. Uh, it was not cooperating, but I think now as uh, it gets a little bit lighter, it will find its way out, hopefully. So, Tristan said I wanted to find Tumba. And, uh, well, I do want to find Tumba. It would be nice. I think. Let's go down Pangolin Track. Let's go down Twin Dams and... I'm wondering if we shouldn't maybe go all the way down to Endams, check the watering hole, check Baboon Pan, and then go back up the Mulwati that way and, and give it a bash and see if we can pick up on a leopard. Because I suspect that that male lion that we had yesterday, I reckon he would have picked up on those sticks lion scent and realized that they actually ended up going back south. And I'm sure he would have followed uh, that scent crossing Gari Main. Maybe we'll even pop past Chitwa Dam. It'll be nice. Maybe, yeah, I haven't been there for a while. Well, obviously not. I haven't been here. Okay, what else have we got going on? <laughs> okay. Now, Kyle, you were saying that you'd really like to see Tumber again, and you're wondering if. I know if there's a record for a particular individual being seen sort of uh, consecutively, something like that. Um, well, 
I don't, but when I first started working here, it was amazing. Uh, we had, I forget how many, it was a hundred and something days of cats, and predominantly it was the Nkuhumba Pride that we were seeing all the time. Tingana was around, and we were seeing Karula and Shongile as well almost every single day. Now, perhaps someone out there who kept track can maybe share. I know there was a collage made of uh, all the different cat spaces for the amount of days. Maybe someone can dig through the archives and try and share that with everybody. Remember to hashtag Safari Live so, so all the viewers can see it. Uh, but that was quite amazing. Uh, sure, that was, we were literally playing rock, paper, scissors and to try and decide uh, who was going to go to the Lions or who was going to go to Karula and Cubs. It was, uh, it was quite amazing to be fighting over cats like that. I can hear a go away bird. We have a look at it, I can see it. It's just up top there, let me do this. Oh no, never mind, it's flown. No, so it's obviously not alarming at anything important. It was just going quack, quack. But nothing else was alarming, so I don't think that it's perhaps a predator. Maybe it was just ch testing its voice out very early. And the, the dawn chorus hasn't even started yet too. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing that again. I did hear it at home. Uh, it was nice. I actually got a fright the one morning I woke up because I could hear a greater honey guard. Well, there were a pair of them outside my window and I thought that was a strange thing to see in the city. But it was quite nice though. It made me miss the bush a lot. Who's walking here? Let me just check here. I saw a footprint, but I don't know what left the footprint. Nope. I think it was the baboons from yesterday. So a lot of these tracks now are wind blown. They're not really fresh, but they look like other tracks. Not what they originally were. Daniel, you're wondering how hard is it to adjust uh, after you've uh, come back from leave? It takes a day or two, in my opinion, to sort of get your bush eyes back in and hear everything. Uh, like at the moment, it's quite difficult to sort of hear the sounds above the roar of Wendy. It's the car. So I think by this afternoon I should be okay again. Uh, but it comes back pretty quickly. My sense, the sense of smell is the hardest one. And trying to remember all the different types of smells. I don't know why we forget, but, but we do. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm not also going into the Mwati now. Sebastian, we might have a job ahead of us at some point. We have to chop this branch. This has been growing for way too long. Okay, let's get that into four by four. Might have to put this down, put duck under there. Okay, so this from here all the way down to Garamain potentially could be the spot that Tumbo is laying in. But now we need to try and find him. I'm actually glad we got in here early. I find it much easier to spot animals with a spotlight. And definitely helps us quite a bit. That uh, to peat and flash the reflection of their eyes, that helps a whole bunch. Yeah, maybe we'll get some, you know, starting out on bird lists. So this is a good spot. And with it getting lighter, we will probably start to hear the chorus maybe in the next 10 to 20 minutes. And this is a great spot to maybe find some robins and things. But we'll keep bumbling down the Mulati and hopefully we'll uh, find a, s a spotted surprise. I'm going to send you back to Tristan to see whereabouts he's driving and if he's found anything yet. Well, Taylor, I hope that you do find your spotted surprise in the form of that naughty little cat. Because he's been such a treat over the last few days and I certainly would love for Taylor to spend a bit of time with him. Now we're just up near Vertela Access, still no tracks that we can see of anything so far, yeah, but we're just taking it very slow, very easy, having a little scan around and just enjoying the morning so far. It's at least not as windy as it was yesterday afternoon and it actually feels as though it was a little colder towards the end of yesterday's drive than it is this morning. But what is this now? Ah, tracks for a leopard, that's always exciting. Now whether they're fresh tracks or not is anyone's guess. They look like they might be alright. I wonder if these are not tracks for Mvula that was walking around. So Senzo over here, I don't know if you're going to be able to get them. Let's try though. It's quite faint. It's not a great place to look for tracks. But just on the edge of the road about there where my glove is, I think. Uh, 
that it's hmm, difficult to make them out but that's pretty much where the track is that I can see so it's not easy to see at all but there's a few little pug marks inside there maybe if I drive further we'll find a better example of it let's just check a little bit further forward sensor because those are not very easy to see at all so it's definitely pug marks for somebody it looks like a male leopard and we know Mvula crossed in yesterday so I would imagine these must be his tracks there we go that might be a little bit better so I'm gonna put a little bit of light on it so we can see it and it also helps Senzo with his being able to see so effectively I know it doesn't look like much at the moment but what you've got uh, Senzo's come back a little bit there we go is the back pad on the right hand side of the track and then the four toes in the track itself so or in the front there so no claw marks and that would be a male leopard just on the size now it's difficult for you guys to see the size there but I would say that that's probably about the size of the palm of my hand so that would be about the size that we're talking about now I got an update right now that Mbula was seen last night in Buffalo's Hook which would mean that these tracks are going to go straight in towards Sydney's which is not ideal but he was coming west from Buffalo's Hook again so he might have headed back towards this direction so even though these tracks are from probably him going there he could potentially have come back as well so we certainly will try and just check and make sure on the boundary but I'm surprised that the guys didn't find these tracks yesterday I know people were looking for him yesterday afternoon and they said there was no sign of his tracks anywhere but these tracks are as I can see now have been driven over a number of times so anyway it's the way it goes nice to see them anyway to see the little pug marks it always fills one with a bit of excitement when you see pug marks even if they're not fresh it's still a happy day to see that they've been moving and being in the area but Mvula has surprised me I don't, the last few months he's just been such an interesting cat in that you know he's kind of come back from nowhere he was a cat that was hardly seen nobody really noticed him moving around he was long periods where I don't think there was a confirmed sighting of him it must have been about four or five months and then out of the blue he's back and since then he's been all over the place and he's been seen everywhere and he's almost a daily feature in this particular section so this northwestern section either on the Simambili side or our side or Biffles Hook but pretty much most days he's being found these days which is really very cool it means that we're getting a lot of sightings of the old man and he's still looking as good as ever he's, he's obviously showing a bit of wear and tear around the ears and and around the face but he's still healthy he's still moving around his teeth look quite good I was having a look at his teeth the one day well not too long ago and when he was yawning and his teeth are still quite healthy they're not worn down in any way so he still looks pretty good for for an older chap and he seems to be doing just fine so certainly I'm not complaining about the fact that we get to spend as much time as we do with it's always very really special to be around and be with him. But no sign of that, no sign of the Inkahuma pride coming back this way, which is what, not what I was hoping for. I was hoping that they would have turned south. Although, the thing is, is that if they had crossed here anyway, the chances of us seeing them would have been quite slim. So we'll just check along Buffalzook boundary all the way towards Buffalzook Dam, see if there's no sign of them crossing south. If there's nothing there, then we'll kind of meander our way back towards the hyena den. Michael, you're wondering how long it took me to be able to spot tracks like the ones we've just seen that are quite tough to see. Um, Michael, I, I don't know actually, it's a, a progressive process, you know, you start out and you're pretty, when you first a guide, when you first become a guide, your tracking skills are pretty useless to be honest. You don't really know what's going on and you rely heavily on a tracker to show you the ropes and so it becomes quite difficult to see to see those tracks in fact hang on a second um, it becomes um, quite hard to actually see them and to work out what exactly is going on but as time goes the more you practice it the easier it becomes the thing is is in difficult light that's when it really is quite tough and like what we have now those tracks are actually quite clear and you come here a little bit later in the day and you'll see them very easily but now at this time of the night or time of the day it's really quite tough 
But what I wanted to show you is that there's another track just here. I think Senzo might be where you can see it, where my glove is. Maybe just right up against the edge of the car. Let's see. There it is. So what you can see there is another pug mark that's in the sand. I'll use the light because it's going to give you a little bit more contrast and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So since I can you see that light, so I'm a bit close. I think I'm a bit close. But there is a pug mark right there and that's actually for a lion. So it's much bigger but not for a female. So much bigger. Now we're going to try to follow these and just see if they don't go to Sydney's dam and see how they go because these are quite fresh. They are from last night as well. Right, let's carry on Senzo and see. And while we do that, I believe Taylor's got a feathered friend. So before it flies away, let's quickly jump across to her. Before I even say anything, just listen. Isn't that amazing? I feel as though I'm not going to be able to talk loud enough that you can hear what's going on. We have a Verose eagle owl sitting on a very low branch of a Tomboeti tre tree, which is actually quite amazing to see. Now, everything is alarming, from the drongos, of course, to the go-away birds. The hornbills are very unhappy. I got quite excited. I thought we were going to come across a leopard, but no even better in my opinion because it's an animal that we don't get to see very often and it was in the big jackalberry and now it's flown to a lower branch it's obviously trying to get away and by sitting in some of these uh, sort of low-lying branches there's lots of twigs and things on the way that could protect them from a drongo mobbing it but if what a beautiful bird I wanted you to get a good look first and then what we will try and do is I'll, I'll try and find a spot where we can reposition uh, I actually got a fright. I thought, oh no, it's going to fly away from us because it flew out of the jackalberry and actually landed in an even better spot. So it doesn't seem to be bothered by us. It seems to be preoccupied with something else. The birds seem to be settling down. Oh no, as I say, that they, they start again. They are not happy, and particularly the go-away birds are very unhappy. They actually seem as though they're, they're coming even closer. But isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful owl. The largest owl that we get in this area too. Oh, hello. If only it would just hop onto that branch a little bit higher, we'd get a perfect clear view of it. Amanda, you said that this is your favorite owl. There we go. I'm happy that we got to make your day. And now remember, like I said, we we're going to do some birding. I think that that's a fantastic bird to start off with. So there's a, there's a variety of birds. You can see the go away birds hopping about in the trees too. Very unhappy of course. And this is my mom's favorite bird, is the go-away bird. She would have been so excited to hear this. I'll have to take a video of it later so I can show it to her. Now the reason why they are alarming is because, well, a rose eagle owl is indeed a predatory bird and they eat a variety of different things. I don't know if they'd necessarily go after something as small as a go-away bird. I mean, they can take monkeys, they can take young warthogs, warthog piglets, they'll take herons, they'll take a number of, uh, of uh, different types of, of birds. Oh my goodness, oh, I thought I found a chameleon on my box, but I'll show you that a little bit later. It's a cool looking insect. It actually looks like a chameleon. Um, so that's why they're alarming. Sorry, I got so distracted there. Isn't that so cool? Seb, do you think we should try to get a better spot? Yeah. Seeing as though we've had a view of it, see if we can improve this. Let's quickly do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and park a little bit. Actually, what about that, Seb? Yeah. Is that a bit better? Yeah. We, we sort of, we might see its face now, yeah. So it's, it's just turned its head away from us again.
it's on a lower branch, but it didn't do any mobbing. I mean, we've been lucky enough to see a drongo sitting on a brown snake eagle's head. I would have uh, liked to have added a Varose eagle owl to my list too. But there we go. There's a slight little gap. It's also got its feathers all fluffed up, whether it's a little bit on the chilly side today or it's actually just annoyed uh, that all the birds have given away its presence. <laughs> As soon as one go-away bird starts singing, they all join in again. Look at those feathers. They are beautiful feathers. Actually, slightly mottled as well. That's a, a really interesting shot. I don't think I've ever seen a feather up close of a Varose eagle owl, but perhaps I'll come and check around here once this bird moves off. Uh, it's not uncommon as they sort of fly, especially when you're trying to get away from pesky drongos and go-away birds and hornbills you know you might bang your wing on a branch and lose a feather that way and that would be a great feather to add to the collection but I have not seen a Varose eagle owl in a very very long time see it's looking up Look at those beautiful pink eyelids too very powerful sharp beak we see they need that to tear into their prey I do, sorry, I, can you say that name again for me? Did you say D. Chef? Did I make that up? Oh, I got it right. So, D. Chef, you said before anybody asks, they eat fruit, nuts, and mice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, you know what I'm surprised we don't see around here, which I saw a lot of down in the, the southern sector of the Sabi Sand, perhaps because there's not a lot of river systems around here, are cane rats. That would definitely be something that a Vero eagle owl would feast upon, is cane rats. That would be nice. Now, I've been fortunate enough to actually see a nesting pair down south again as well. I was really lucky. They, they would breed in the same spot every single year. It was quite amazing. And they were using a hummocorps nest. So you know the bird, the brown bird that has got a hammer shaped sort of head to it, it's just its feathers that uh, make it look like that. They create some of the largest nests in the world and owls typically use sort of platform nests or natural cavities and in the case of the Varroa's eagle owl they actually will nest on top of um, well, of other birds' nests, and they seem to enjoy and, and often utilize the hummer corpse nest. And that was really nice to sort of watch. You just see their heads peering over uh, every now and then. Oh, which is so cool. And they're not exactly the prettiest looking chicks. Although not many birds are very cute uh, when they're sort of born and they're just getting their feathers. They have bizarre looking things. Right, I'm, I'm keen to reposition once more. What do you think, Seb? It's, it's actually looking for something on the ground. I don't know if it's maybe spotted a small little rodent or something like that. See that? See, it's focusing on the ground. Actually, wait, let's hold our position. Maybe it's going to jump around on the branch and dive straight into the ground. One day I did watch a spotted eagle owl. It was so it was um, I just sort of started guiding, and it was quite amazing to see. Uh, there was a little scrub here, and it was actually about this time, a little bit earlier, so it was slightly more darker. And I don't know where we were going. If we were going to do something first thing in the morning, a walk, or and we were all meeting up together. Well, anyways, I said, "Oh, look, a scrub here," and it was just grazing. And the next minute, all we heard was "bah." And the spotted eagle owl flew past and snatched it and then flew away with it. <laughs> so that was one of the few kills I've seen with owls. Otherwise, I have also seen uh, the barred owlets and the pill spotted owlets catching big grasshoppers and crickets and things in the evenings. Okay, let's try this reposition. Let's see. I hope, though, if we reposition now that it's not going to fly because earlier the birds were distracting it, but we'll give it a bash anyway. It'll put these jackalberries to sort of seek sheltering from the sun. I mean, I think it's going to be warm. Clouds are here, but it's actually not cold today at all. Back under here. It's just sitting in such an awkward spot, isn't it? Spot, isn't it? Yeah, because you, you're higher up. I'm just thinking, as I know if I drive too close, I'm going to chase it away. Let's try if we go back here. Don't fly, birdie. Please. I just want to see. I, we might we'll reposition 150 times just to try and get the best spot. Mm, no, that's not going to work. To try and get them, so I'm trying to find a spot to actually. Just need to drive some of these. To drive some of them. So trying to do it as quietly as 
Okay. Let's on the road, we're going to have to use another route. So we're going to try and go up here. Watch the buffalo thorn on the left. Let's see. Please behave, Al. Thank you for cooperating. Oh, Wendy, you are hopeless. See, I can see it clearly, but I don't think it's going to be for you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, there we go. Have you got it? If I go a little bit further forward, I think it's going to be even better. Hang on. Look there, yeah, that's better. There we go, we've got a spot, now we can show you its beautiful face. Sorry, Alice, may I have that question again? I'm just so concentrating on trying to get a perfect view for all of you. There we go, look at that. Now it's a question from Michael, and you were wondering if these owls would ever predate smaller owl species. So, something that we've definitely learned, what I've learned watching these animals, is that what they tell you in the books is really just a guideline, and, and we know that animals do whatever they want. So I think, yes, that birds are opportunistic, just as, that's so cool, just as, of course, uh, lions, leopards, hyenas, all the rest of the predators are opportunistic. So if there was an opportunity to catch an owl, I don't think it's going to say no. Um, I don't think it will eat its own owl species. I haven't read anything about them being sort of cannibalistic, but I'm sure if there was a spotted eagle owl, no spotted eagle owl, and maybe a grass owl, a barn owl, that was just a sort of slightly smaller species, because they do indeed eat other birds, uh, I don't think that they would say no. I haven't seen it personally, but remember we can't, uh, sort of say no to these things because I think even watching fish eagles example a lot of you were surprised seeing a fish eagle eating another bird because well as the name suggests they catch fish and they also scavenge I've seen them scavenging on many antelope carcasses and, and, and well, carcasses of a variety so they'll honestly eat whatever they can if it means that they're going to survive another day out here in the wild, they will. But I suppose, Michael, it's something that we're just going to have to keep watching. And maybe we'll be fortunate enough to witness such unusual behavior. That's what I'd really love to do. Imagine being able to absorb your life and just live off of the land in the middle. Uh, sort of out here in Africa and watching these animals every single day. Like we only spend a couple of hours out here, but imagine sleeping out in the bush every night. That would be really amazing. I think you would learn so much. That is a great shot. I hope you're all taking lots and lots and lots of screenshots. Now, Roshni, you're wondering if those pink eyelids are unique to the uh, Varose eagle owl. Yes, it is. I'm not aware of any other owl species uh, that I've seen um, that have them. Is looking for something. I'm wondering if it's not going to try and catch one last meal before it gets too sort of hot. It's very interested with something down on the ground, so there could be some rodents, uh, you know, sort of funneling through the grass. Again, even though they've got massive feet and big talons, which typically suggest the size of uh, the meal that they will catch, they will go after anything. Even so, if a little bush felt gerbil runs out, it'll take it and it'll eat it as a little snack. Remember, if it has got chicks somewhere, I'm actually not sure what time they nest. Uh, what time of the year they nest, I'll have to have a look. Um, that uh, A little bushveld gerbil would be a great meal for a young Varose eagle owl chick. Uh, and that would probably just swallow it whole, in fact. Look at that, isn't that amazing? That's an Egyptian goose, also just sort of honking in the distance. So that's not the owl, and then a couple of go-away birds still making a noise. I'm actually going to jump onto my bird app while you look at that beautiful bird. And I just want to quickly check what time of the year they... Uh, they sort of breed, because I haven't got a clue. I can't remember. I haven't, that's the problem. We, we, sometimes we go months and months without seeing certain birds, and then you forget all this type of stuff. It's, you know, talking about nesting, laying dates. We've got for Botswana, and we want South Africa. So anywhere between June and September. Okay, so this owl, I don't know if it's a male or female, I'll see if there's uh, any obvious uh, sexual dimorphism, but um, this, this, this uh, owl could have chicks already, or it could be in the process. Let's quickly check here if they give, no, they don't, Oi. just sort of preening itself now. No, they don't uh, give any differences between male and female, so there's obviously no coloration difference. 
ask me who's a new viewer, you're wondering if these are rare birds. Oh, sorry, Alice, actually, between the go-away birds shouting in my ears, I actually couldn't even hear that. Let me turn the volume up. So it's how, okay, how do these rare birds find each other to mate? Very, uh, a good question. Um, probably through calling, so we normally hear their beautiful call, which I'll play for you a little bit later. I won't do it now. Um, it's a very sort of soft, it reminds me of very soft drums being played first thing in the morning, is when you often hear it. Um, so by vocalization will probably be the most obvious, uh, the most obvious way. And that's how a lot of birds uh, find one another, is just through their calls. Go away birds are actually the most bothered by this owl, so I wonder if they don't snatch up the go away bird every now and then. Though the, though the go away birds are actually, to me, are a lot smaller than what we see because they're so full of feathers. They've got such long tails. They're actually not a very big bird at all. And they go quiet again, but they're all hovering above it. It's so funny because while the uh, go-away birds are on watch, the rest of the, the birds are all just sort of foraging around, not really too bothered at all. There they are, watching very carefully. And I can hear, it sounds like an African grey hornbill also calling. <laughs> this is Stanley, 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 you say the go-away birds sound a lot like a baby crocodile. <laughs> That's quite funny. I haven't actually heard anyone say that before. So there we go. And what have I seen now too? Hang on. While you're looking there, what is that? I don't know my binoculars. I'm going to quickly... It's a leopard. Is it? It's a daker. A little, there's something with something sitting on the damn wall. I just saw big ears. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. it's behind all the trees, but um, oh no, still there's just a little bit low on the branch. Uh, I think it'll be difficult for all of you to see, but there's a little daker that's obviously now responding to all these alarm calls. See here, they also hear the African grey hornbill that high pitch, it's now also sitting up in the tree joining in the party that's shouting at the birds. But that's sort of what happens every now and then is you'll hear all these birds alarming and then you'll might find that the smaller antelope will go, what are you guys all talking about? What's there? Is it a leopard? You know, do I need to worry about it? Now, that fully grown dake is probably going to be a bit big for this feroz eagle owl, but if it was a youngster, I wouldn't put it past me. There it goes, jumping up. Let's try and reposition again, Seb. Maybe if I go around, we'll get another view. But this, we're just surrounded by birds at the moment. Okay. What we'll do is uh, we'll try and reposition now and see if we can get a bit of view. But let's go across to Tristan and see if he's found that male leopard that he was tracking. Well, unfortunately not, Taylor, because my male leopard has gone into Buffles Hook and there's not really much I can do it. And the lions that we were tracking also into Buffles Hook. So, unfortunately, no real chance to track either of those properly but we've just come along Buffles Hook cut line just to try and see what's going on and see if there isn't anything else around. Aubrey did say that he heard lions calling north of the camp so I'm going to try and see if we can't find any sign of them here now. In fact Aubrey is actually calling me so I'm just going to answer him quickly. Go ahead. But on my right hand side while Aubrey talks to me is... Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to try and see let me go back quickly and try and actually get you a better view because I thought I had been far enough away but maybe not there we go Senzo that might help you a little bit or maybe back further um, no, no come down come down okay there we go yeah that one right at the back here those three lines that you see come down and then straight in from the that track there right so now this track is quite a cool one so this is one that, not that one that we see that often but if anyone wants to hazard a guess, hashtag Safari Live, what you think that might be. It's got three lines that you can see going across. And then there's a small little line at the back left of that track or on the back left of our screen. So that will give you a little bit of an idea of what it is. And you can see then there's another foot in just in front of that. And this is an animal, like I said, that we don't see that often. So it's one that is really a mysterious thing and, and one that I'm hoping one day we'll be able to show you. I don't know if anybody's actually been able to put one of these 
on screen yet. It'll be interesting to know. There we go. They're crossing the road and they're quite fresh. They're on top of all the vehicle tracks. So it must have been during the night um, or early hours of this morning because this road is still used quite a lot by the anti-poaching unit. They come along here fairly regularly to try and check about what's going on so if it's on top of that it means it's from the early hours of this morning wouldn't it have been nice if we came over the road and it was trotting along now i don't know if we've got any answers alice but if we don't i will then just give it to everybody because it's going to be a while so this is a track for an aardvark right that is the front right foot that you were seeing there so I believe some of you were guessing pangolin. No, pangolin's a little bit more different. A pangolin is quite a round, big sort of print that you've got. And then the claw marks drag a little bit. But this is the toes of a aardvark. So they've got three long toes with little claws in the front, which is what we see on that track over there. And then a tiny little one at the back. And that then they stand. They stand on their front toes. And this little toe just makes a little dot on the sort of side of the track so it depends on which foot it is but that would be the right foot that is stood and that's why the little dot is on the left hand side of the track so for an aardvark and it's probably ran over the road and has now gone towards somewhere where it's going to be inside and taking it easy the amount of tracks we see for aardvark is actually quite unreal there are lots of them here it's just for some reason we can't manage to find them or catch a glimpse of them one day is one day though we're going to get them in the day and we'll be able to find where they've gone now Aubrey is telling me that he's got tracks for these two male lines moving south towards the boundary so I'm gonna try and see if I can't find where they've popped out and while we do that let's go back to Taylor and a beautiful owl we're still with our friend the Rose Eagle Owl and I'm, I'm I'm almost convinced that there's something small moving around in the grass because it is very intrigued with something down here and that's quite typical for their hunting behavior with these owls is that they for instance are not like raptors most of the raptors you know will fly around looking for a fresh trail of urine from a rodent or something along those lines they prefer to hunt from the perch and they'll look about and then they'll sweep down. Now I have heard stories of them, I haven't actually seen it myself, this is just what I've heard from other guides that have had exciting um, sort of encounters with these birds and they've said that what they like to do sometimes at night is also crash through into the branches and try and flush out any birds that have been roosting for the evening and that's something that I think would be quite amazing to actually see and that of course you can imagine you think that you're oh, just having a nice rest on this branch it was such a busy day and all is good all is well and the next minute you get smashed out of the tree onto the ground I'm sure you're a bit disorientated and the bird will well the owl will snatch you up but look at those massive talons exceptionally large and that's actually how you uh, sort of tell how sort of big the prey species is for a particular raptor it is not necessarily by the size of the bird but by the size of the feet and by the size of the talons so if you look at crowned eagles for example if anyone has ever had the opportunity to see a crowned eagle they have got massive feet for their size because they're nowhere near the size of a martial eagle again if you look at a martial eagle though I feel as though they're in proportion and um, just because they are such a big bird as well but that's really cool it's so beautiful you don't get to spend time with owls like this uh, it hasn't moved off of its perch I thought we were going to get a clearer view but it just keeps hiding behind some vegetation making it a little bit difficult for us to of course get a decent shot I'm also just looking around me to see if there's anything else ha hanging around the dam. What do you think, Seb? What do you think we should do? I'm just wondering. We could spend the entire morning with this owl, but I also don't want to disturb it too much if it is trying to hunt. I don't feel, I feel as though it's unfortunately not going to be as successful with all the go away birds around here they're getting really really close they better be careful yeah the hornbills that trrr, trrr, trrr noise is quite funny the egyptian gooses got quiet the dacre ran away see it keeps looking down oh 
What are you looking at? It's a good system down below for a rodent to hang about. There's quite a bit of grass. There's some nice coverage from, from of course, some fallen trees. So there could really be anything down there. It's just strange that it keeps looking down all the time. I'm just scanning about. I wonder where it's going to roost for the day because that's not going to be a very good spot. I think it's going to have to hop into a jackalberry. Kobe, who's only 15 years old, you're wondering what do I enjoy most about the Varose Eagle Owl? Um, I think probably how agile they are. Now, I mean, you look at an owl as they sit here, they don't look like they're going to be uh, the best sort of flyers, but it's really amazing how nimble these birds actually are and how much control they have. Uh, so if you've ever seen one flying, I've been very lucky, we used to see them flying quite a bit down in the southern sands and then also I saw them quite, uh, quite often in, in Zambia. Uh, flying from anna tree to anna tree and that is that is unbelievable and remember owls fly completely silently you, you do not hear a sound from their from their feathers which is really amazing and it's important just when you're hunting at night to be as quiet as possible so that your prey doesn't know that you're coming uh, so i think that's one of my favorite things uh, about about the owls but they're also they very large eyes they again they're very powerful sharp beaks they've got really amazing talons as we were able to sort of have a look at I think just a little bit of everything I just like owls in general I think there's so much more that we can learn about them but they are so secretive there you go see trying to focus in on something down there what have you seen and you can see all the white around its eyes as well, which plays a very similar role as to the white underneath a lion's eye. All that helps absorb, bring the light in, reflecting it back into the eye so that they can see very, very well. I'm hoping it's actually just going to hop down and go sort of crashing into the grass and catch whatever has caught its attention. I wonder if it wasn't watching it from the jackalberry tree as well, and that's why it sort of moved slightly closer. Get a better perch, because it's not too far off the ground now either. <laughs> Mita, who is one of our young friends, she's only eight years old, you say that the owl's nose looks like a cat's claw. That's very funny. That actually looks like um, the picture that we ha uh, you all uh, tagged, well, you tagged me in to have a look, of Tumba's claws from the other day. That is very true. I'm sure it'll be sh even sharper than a cat's claw too. That very well spotted though. I love the young children. I love their imagination and how they think of different things. It's really quite funny. Well, the go-away birds can't be too bothered now because even though they're shouting, they're starting to feed again on the jackalberries. I suppose they can't waste their entire day alarming at a particular bird. There's one sort of just up there. And that's bouncing around. There's lots and lots of fruit on these lower lying branches now. And it's important that they keep feeding as well. I'm sure they're using quite a bit of energy too. Bouncing about like that. Constantly shouting at uh, the at the Varose eagle owl. There you go. But not they're not ripe yet. Just be patient birds. I promise you, once they get to yellow, you'll enjoy them even more. Delicious. You look like you need a napkin. Well, no napkins out here. What those birds will do to try and clean their beaks is just sort of uh, strike it against a branch. And then that normally is good enough to remove all that excess fruit. Chew with your mouth closed. My mother would be very upset with you. Isn't that beautiful? Definitely think the go-away birds are making the most of the fruit at the moment. I just wish they would save some for me. Oh, still hopping about. Look at that. They're serious acrobats, aren't they? Being able to dangle on the smallest little branch upside down and then to climb back up again. I can hear a southern bobo calling in the distance too. <laughs> 
Buttons cockatoo, you said they just look like silver cockatiels. They do indeed. They definitely do resemble a cockatiel of some sort. Well, I think that that was fantastic. Now, there's something else that I have to show you, Seb. I don't know how I'm going to do it without making too much noise. I kid you not, there's an insect. I'm, I'm not joking. It looks like a chameleon. I have to bring my camera box up here. I don't want to... So, I'm hoping that you can see what I'm seeing. Can you see that little thing there? just want to see if I can get the right angle. There it is. I'll just keep my finger there. Look at that. You think it looks like a chameleon? Isn't that amazing? Front of the head over here. But it's not. And it looks like the tail at the back. You can see it's, it's antennas on, on the left hand side. I don't know what this thing is. If it's a type of moth. I have absolutely no idea, but it's the most extraordinary thing. But honestly, I thought I had this micro chameleon on my camera box. Isn't nature just so fantastic? Now, I don't know if it's intentionally camouflaging itself as a chameleon. What do you think, Alice? Do you think it looks like a chameleon? What do you think, Seb? Yeah, I see your imagination. <laughs> okay, there we go. So. So Alice is a, a mixture between a chameleon and a leaf. From the angle that I had it, I was convinced uh, that it was a chameleon. I was like, no way, it's the smallest chameleon in the whole world. It was so tiny. But yeah, so it has got, definitely got natural camouflage. It's not working very well though on my black camera box. It ideally needs to be on a leaf. I suspect it landed here last night uh, while Wendy was parked. Oh, there goes the owl. Bye owl. Just so, just letting you know that it has flown away caught my attention. There it goes. Diving down into the drainage line. That was cool. That was really amazing. Mm, I don't know where to go. I think I want to continue with the Mulwati though. And go all the way to Gauri Main and then come around and have a look. Right, Tristan has arrived at a watering hole. I'm not sure which one. Let's go take a look at a beautiful scene. It is beautiful indeed, Taylor. We've got this magical reflection and the sun that's rising up in the east with all this frontal cloud that's stretching over the sky and well, a lonely hippo head in the water there as well. So it's all very pleasant at Buffalzook Dam at the moment. There's a lapwing going past. And we also found tracks for the two male lions coming past Buffalzook Dam now. So they're heading towards, looks like towards Cheetah Cut Line and maybe towards Torchwood, but I'll follow them anyway and just see where they head off to. But it's interesting how the hippos move around a lot at Bufuzuk Dam. Sometimes we'll have three or four in here, sometimes none, and then sometimes we'll get this guy that hangs around. And as you can see, just got his head sticking out. It's a cold morning, and I would imagine that actually the water is probably warmer than the outside temperature. And that's why most of his body is underneath at the moment. Once the sun rises, and it, because it's going to be quite a chilly day, I would imagine that this hippo will actually spend some time on the bank sunning himself, trying to get warm. I don't think he'll stay in the water all the time, but you'll find that the water probably is holding temperature a little bit better than what the outside land temperature is. It's also out of the way of the wind, so being down there with a the big blubber layer means that he's probably staying warmer than walking around and being out and about. It's amazing though how they disappear. <laughs> Obviously he's giving himself away by a lot of ripples that have come off him as he went under, but if he stays still, you wouldn't even know. Henny, you say that water looks cold. Well, Henny, I don't know which is colder. Like I say, it's freezing outside today. The wind is very chilly. It almost feels like there's been snow somewhere and that's caused the wind to be very icy. So I'm not sure, but there, I'm, I would imagine that the water is not very pleasant for us as humans. We don't have the same thickness of skin that hippos do and therefore I doubt we're going to be in any way able to cope with this water and be any way comfortable in it. So. I'm glad I'm not a hippo that has to lie in water at this temperature, that's for sure. Now, I think what I'm going to try to do is not spend too much time here. I want to try and follow these tracks quickly and see where they head and what happens with them. It is a beautiful scene, but while it's still quite cool and the sun isn't up yet, try and see if we can't get onto these tracks because I would imagine that these individuals are moving quite quickly. So that's why I want to try and 
get onto their tracks as quick as possible and then try and follow as quick as possible. The nice thing with two male lions is they generally leave quite big paw prints so it should not be too difficult to actually follow through and see. Now they've cut straight this way. I'm just going to go past the tracks now. The tracks go that way but I'm going to go around quickly towards the cut line and just see before I follow the tracks all the way along and take the long way around. Might as well just get around quicker and just have a little look because potentially they've gone straight towards the cut line and instead of wasting time just following tracks to a boundary we can just get to the boundary and check the boundary if there's nothing coming out then we know that they're still inside there somewhere the other thing we did see is we saw fresh fresh male leopard tracks crossing north into Buffalo's Hook from Buffalo's Hook Dam so I would imagine those must be for Gajima, given that Tingana was left mobile south last night. So I would imagine Gajima must have been moving around in this area and has crossed back into Buffalzook. We never seem to catch a glimpse of that male. Always finding his tracks here at Buffalzook Dam, but never actually see him. One day is one day though, we'll catch him unawares at some point. I suppose we don't spend much time up here at night, so if we did at night maybe we would see him a little bit more often. But he's such an elusive male at the best of times anyway that getting glimpses of him is quite tough. But cheetah cut line is not far, so I don't know if these lines will still be on our side. So Lauren from Illinois, you want to know how I can differentiate a lion cub track from a leopard track? Well Lauren, it's quite easy in that um, a lion cub is very seldom on its own. You're never going to see a lion cub walking around by itself confidently down the road. So you would find a situation that when there's a lion cub walking, there's generally a big fat female footprint somewhere on that road as well or somewhere in that vicinity. So that always helps and makes things a lot easier um, also the shape of the tracks are slightly different the, the lion tracks have a little bit more of an angular back pad area whereas the the leopards are a lot more rounded on the lobes towards the back so that's how I always see from lion and leopard but most certainly the lion cubs very seldom are going to walk by themselves around this area and especially on road areas you might find a lion cub track in the bush but not in a road section like this they're going to try and stay off the road try and stay by themselves and wait for mom to come back before they move around now i'm just trying to turn down the radio because the guys are talking a lot this morning loudly now i believe taylor has done a tree hopping process and has carried on with her owl and has managed to find it again which is quite some feat. We have indeed. It's making an unusual call. That's not the typical sound that a Varose eagle owl makes. I've never actually heard them make that call before. It sounded very much like an African grey hornbill. And we were going to leave it alone and then we saw that it flew out into the open and I thought we have to come back. We have to come back for one last quick sighting of this beautiful bird. Now my opinion on these birds is actually starting to change a little bit. Uh, every now and then, lucky enough, and we, we do find their hiding spots uh, during the day. But I wonder if these owls maybe don't hunt sometimes during the day. It really wouldn't surprise me just because uh, I've had seen a lot, a lot more strange things happen out here in nature. So I don't know if anyone has ever had a sighting of perhaps these birds out in the open. Oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. Amazing. That is incredible. Oh wow, that was the best Varose owl sighting. My hat was up because I was taking pictures of it. Um, I've ever had, I think, in my life. Quite, quite confidently saying, now we need to reverse out of here. We won't follow it anymore. I, I suspect that it is going to go further and further down into the Mulwati. And I'm just going to reverse because it's a bit difficult to turn around in the thick sand. But I think it's, um, it's going to find a nice spot. How great was that? What luck we are having here. Hey? Like I said, I think that's totally the best sighting I've ever had of, uh, of a Varose Eagle Owl. Now hang on, there's cat tracks here. Yeah? So this is where, last night, let me just 
jump out quickly. So Nsuku walked down here. He obviously watched us and he came through here. He walked around. He marked his territory up against those spike thorns. And someone has walked back down this way. I wonder if it's not him. He might be able to see us. I want to see if there's any other bear to tracks. He has a track here. I don't know if you can get this one. It's um looks like it's been superimposed. Looks like there's actually two lion footprints over here from the same animal, just over here, and it's quite big. Even though it's in the sand, and often uh, the sand can of course trick you because it's soft. It's the same thing as mud. When an animal stands in that track, normally it looks a lot bigger, but definitely still a male lion track. So I wonder if he didn't go that way, try to find the sticks, wasn't successful, and then came back the same route. So that's quite interesting, going straight back towards Twin Dams again. Let's continue. Let's go all the way through the Mulati like we said we were. <laughs> it's taken us a while. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. I do just want to turn around. Uh, I think the easiest bit is for me to do this. Come on, Wendy, turn! And then we'll, we'll go back in again. Whee! Oh, I'm so chuffed with that tile sighting. Even if we don't see anything else for the rest of the day, I think that was quite, uh, quite uh, special. Okay, so let's keep searching. We d I didn't really see leopard tracks. I did see some ones, I think they were from yesterday though. Uh, obviously from where Tumba went running. Oh, now it's chilly all of a sudden in here. But we'll just go all the way through. There's lots of nice spots up here. I'm surprised you don't see leopards in here more often. Nice banks for them to sort of sit up and survey the area. Also good shady spots to keep out of the sun. Nice trees to climb if uh, you do find yourself in a bit of danger. It's definitely a good spot for a young leopard. Young inexperienced leopard that needs to sort of edge on the side of caution. And, and sort of avoid uh, the other big cats or one of the big leopards. This is where we found Hosanna a couple of times too. Let's see. See, if I was a leopard, I'd be sitting up there. What do you think, Seb? Oh, yeah. I totally would be up on the, these banks. You can have a look at it. So that's when you get such a nice back. bank. Back, bank. Beautiful. Right, let's carry on. Oh, now it's freezing. I was just about to say how nice and warm it is. I'm going to zip my jacket up or add a scarf. I have got a scarf in here. And I've still got my chameleon leaf insect too. I, I need to find a spot to release it. But I would like to try and take a photograph of it at some point as well. This is very interesting. Just check here. Tracking in the sand is really difficult. It's not easy. Nothing here just yet. We'll go back up towards Twin Dams, though. We'll have a quick look. Um, Alice, can you ask Tristan if he's already been to Treehouse Dam? If that would be okay, please. Because that will determine where we're going to go next. Because I know now if he's tracking lions, he, he may have changed his route completely because we do that all the time. So I'm just checking down on the ground. Okay, we might go towards Treehouse Dam then. Wait, what's happened here? No. The baboons that I heard alarming yesterday, they crossed through here maybe yet late yesterday afternoon. I haven't actually seen or heard many vehicles going past and that's unusual from uh, the guides on the other side. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to turn around then. Thanks, Tristan, for up that update. So, apparently, there's two male lions near Chitwa. So, we turn around. Let's go back through the Mulati then. Yeah, we need to chase. Oh, yeah. Whoa, my goodness. Where did I go? <laughs> I reversed off the road and almost ended right up in Little Gary. Phew, my heart sank. Um, so, what we're going to do now is I'm also going to try and go to the Eastern Channel. Apparently, there's two male lines near Chitwa, and we just upgraded. Did we upgrade the towers? We just yeah. added. We, so, we, we've done all sorts of things now. So, our signal should improve theoretically at Chitwa, and we need to go and do a bit of exploring. So, I think that's maybe what we'll go and do. We'll leave the rest of Juma for Tristan to handle. I'll just jump up on the side and then I'll see if I can get hold of Shanae or maybe Peter. I don't think Dylan's around. I think Dylan might be on holiday. That's Brent's brother. So, 
we'll try and do that. So I'm going to send you back to Tristan though, so I can try and uh, figure out what we're going to do next, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Well, hopefully you will find something to go and do, Taylor, and something to see. Now I found tracks where it looks like Tundi going in a westerly direction on central so we're gonna just check these along because the lion tracks haven't cut central anyway just to see if the lion tracks do cross south over central and well might as well follow the leopard tracks while we check and see where the lion tracks go so it's all just a whole complicated mess at the moment but we'll figure it out eventually apparently there was some sign of like two male lines I think somewhere around Chitwa and Nets area so I wonder if it's not the same two that are walking down this way now the tracks that I'm talking about for this leopard look quite fresh and certainly nice tracks to follow I'll show you what I'm talking about now there we go so you can see them slowly meandering down the road in front of me on this right side of the road You'll, there's lots of little pug marks as they go there they are you can see them as they walking so that would be I would imagine for Tandi it's a female leopard whether it's Tandi is obviously a debatable thing because from tracks you can't always be 100% certain but they're coming from Torchwood side on central and that's normal for him for her to walk this area and James you were hoping to see the reunion for Tandi and Tumba so I most certainly will try and see if we can't follow them but you can see look how clean and crisp they look and it's nice because you can see a little track next to it. Now that little track that you see next to it is from a genet. So that's a very small genet track. And that's the comparison of a genet to a female leopard, which is really awesome. How cool is that? You can see a genet is tiny in comparison to a female leopard. Remember, a female leopard is very small in comparison to the male leopard, which is small in comparison to the male lion. So it would be really cool to see both of those cats this morning, especially a genet. I suppose genets are called genet cats, but they're actually not a cat. They're in their own family altogether. Right, but both of those look very good. And so we know the genets are from last night. And, well, it seems as though the leopard is actually on top of the genet tracks in places. So I'm going to see. Maybe we get lucky. Maybe if we just follow these through, we certainly will find something. It would be really nice if we did because, well, you know, no, it's never not nice to find a spotted cat. That's for sure. So... Let's just keep following these. They also might lead us somewhere. You never know. There might be a kill somewhere. It was a windy, blustery night and perfect conditions for a leopard to hunt. So it's possible. Let's rather just check them out and make sure they're not. But so far, like I say, no sign of our lions coming out this side. Hank and Snazzy, you want to know if there's any upda updates on Game Drive Radio for Shadow and Cub? No, there's been no updates. I've asked, I've tried to check around. Nobody can give me an clue as to what's going on at this stage. So, unfortunately not. But, that's not to say that she isn't okay. She could just be hiding out and nursing her injury back to health. So, I'm not too concerned about it just yet. But hopefully we will find some sign of her. Maybe Taylor, if she's heading in that direction, can have a little look and see. She might get lucky. But let's see. Tundi's tracks now turn. Carry on going down central, which is good news. So it's heading towards the Mulawati. Maybe she's with little Tumba somewhere down this side. So we'll just keep following these and check where they go. The problem is, is the bush gets very dense and very thick very quickly here. And the road becomes almost impossible to track on. So we're going to have our work cut out, that's for sure, as we follow these. Still going though, nicely down the road. Come on, Tundi, be in the road for us. Make it easy for us. Don't make it difficult. But I can tell you it is freezing cold. When you're on the cut lines, those big roads, the wind howls through there. And it is certainly not very warm at all. So I do apologize if I sniff every now and then. It's just a hazard of driving around in cold, open vehicles. Tracks are still going, which is good news. I wonder if she's not going to be. We found them once before around Nyala Road, north and south. I, sorry, I was just stopping there because I thought I heard a Franklin alarm call, but it wasn't. So we've seen them around Nyala Road, north and south before. So I wonder if they're not somewhere in that vicinity. Um, no 
tracks that I can see there now. Alright, so let's head towards the Mulawati and just check what's going on that way. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find her still on the road somewhere, but if not, I would imagine somewhere in one of these drainage lines and if they're not together, both of them will probably be curled up in tight little balls trying to stay nice and warm, as we saw Tumba doing yesterday afternoon until he was rudely interrupted by Tingana. Tracks are still going. I can see them now that it's gotten a little bit puffier and sandier. They're still going straight in a westerly direction, so it's good news. Of course, I don't know if anyone's driven here in the last day, so these could be from yesterday during the day. So it might be a long tracking session. There's some impalas that are not looking too worried on my right hand side. So we'll just keep following them along and, and see. You know when the leopard has been close by, impalas often look a lot more stressed and they'll be kind of watching and looking and checking out what's going on and as though their life depended on it and it does, it does obviously. So when these leopards pass through from a while ago you'll find that they get a little bit relaxed and they're not as phased by what's going on so the crossing I was talking about where we have seen Tani and Tamba before is just in front here Jason you're wondering if I think Tingan will track down Tamba no he already was leaving Tamba off and walking southwards last night when we left him um, when we lost him in the thick bush, he was heading the opposite direction to where Tamba was. So, no, I think he's fine. I think he's just worked out that there was no food there. He proved that he was the dominant male. Tamba in no way resisted his approaches or tried any sort of nonsense. And so Tingana knows he's asserted himself and has then carried on. So, probably fine. He also recognizes somewhat that it is a familiar scent and, and of a leopard that he knows and that's why he's not too phased by it and hasn't really continued pushing and trying to actually get towards where Tumba was. But I've lost the tracks now. Unfortunately, it seems as though they've cut off. So what we're gonna have to do is try and head down Yala Road south and see if they don't come out that way. Talking about Nyala Road, which is where we are right now, is a Nyala just in front of me. So it's an aptly named road. It's named for the right reasons. Where is it? So there it is. Now, hopefully the gremlins won't strike as I negotiate this little crossing. There's our bull Nyala. Wait, Mr. Nyala, we want to have a look at you. There we go. There's our Nyala male. And he's busy walking towards Nyala Road North. So you've got your namesake road. And I suppose maybe that's why it was called Nyala Road. is because of the amount of Nyala we do see in this area. And he's a particularly good looking individual. He's a nice big male, large horns. You can see lots of fluff and fur and deep chocolate brown. So a male in his prime, that's for sure. But you can see also very relaxed. So in no way concerned that there might be a leopard here. Which means... Either she passed through here a while ago, or she hasn't gotten here yet. So, I'll have to just keep looking around and seeing what else we can find and see if I can't pick up these tracks again. I would imagine that she's turned down towards Nyala Road South and I'll pick them up there, or Vulture's Nest, one of those two areas is where I would imagine we'll get them. Now, we're going to have a few gremlins as we try and negotiate this little next area. So, before we lose you guys, let's cut across to Taylor and see where she is and whether she's figured out her plan for the rest of the morning. confused at the moment Tristan so we picked up all the tracks of the Styx Pride and they were going in and out um, of Little Gowrie and back into Juma and then we followed them we followed them past Gwen's um, old den and then now they're coming back this way I just want to quickly go and check here on Gowrie man there's loads of lion tracks male tracks female tracks um, but I, I'm convinced it's the Styx Pride because they were obviously in this area this cat's are persistent, eh? I mean, I can't believe they carried on trying to hunt uh, yesterday. Even, yeah, these, these are male. That, yeah, male, male. That actually looks like male leopard. I wonder if Tingana didn't come this way too. But the lioness tracks, were, they haven't, cro they haven't crossed out again. So, 
I don't know where they are. They could be around here somewhere. There were lots of water back in the area. There's often lots of kudu around here. We know we've seen plenty water sightings. So there's no shortage of food. Even the zebra I like it about. I remember they, were, they just started burning and there were a couple of green sprigs that were popping out from the ground after we had a slight drizzle. Uh, so maybe we must just carry on with cheetah cut line for a little bit. There's also elephant tracks going up and down here. And check Leadwood. I think I think Leadwood is going to be a good road to check. Uh, that sort of just cuts into that block and we'll go back towards Gary Main. Let's have a little look around here because I don't quite know uh, what these cats were up to. I've got the mail tracks again. Maybe we even bump into Tingana. I reckon if he went on a walkabout, he was obviously on a serious mission yesterday. And if he bumped into those lions, he will have to get a move on too. So that could have also altered his route slightly. We will just investigate here for a little bit and see if we come about anything. Those male lions that Tristan was talking about, I got hold of uh, Jamie from Arethusa and he says they are on Annette's. Uh, so they're not on Chitwa, unfort well, unfortunately for us. And um, he said though, if they should have shown any sign of coming this way, uh, he'll indeed give us a shout. We will most certainly pop onto Chitwa and do a bit of exploring there too. I just want to quickly check this area uh, before we go all the way sort of to the southeast. I think that's a good idea actually. Let me see if I can hear the game drive radio. No, not anymore. There's zebra tracks around here. Just, just check here. Male lion tracks. We could have just missed those males this morning. Maybe if we came here first thing, we would have caught them. But of course, you don't know these types of things at the time. Yeah, loads of zebra tracks. Zebra tracks are a lot fresher than the lion tracks, so maybe we're going to bump into them. So I'm just going to keep scanning this side. This is nice and sandy here, so you will be able to see quite easily if a cat crossed out. Here's Ledwood, so this is what we're going to take. So the zebra tracks continue going down Triple M and some elephant tracks. Let's go along here. I, have a, I don't know, I have a feeling. Some, something's telling me drive Ledwood, drive Ledwood. So we shall drive Ledwood. And hopefully my gut feeling will be right. I don't know what we're, if it's going to be a leopard or a lion because there's both sets of tracks around here. Tumba could have also turned and come back this way. But I reckon that set of male lion tracks that we had was most likely from Nsuku from yesterday. Just makes sense if he came around this route and then he checked cheetah cut line when went down. Or it could have been some male lions or so coming down from the north. We know that they like to walk straight down cheetah cut line. And they have a, a route that they mark regularly. It would be nice to find the sticks on a kill. It looked like they definitely needed a meal. say thank you <laughs> but no I'm just teasing I Lara Moe you say that I always match uh, the, the scenery my, my hood matches the sky and my hair matches the grass thank you so much <laughs> I love hey, no I don't know is my hair that yellow <laughs> no I'm just teasing um, thank you Lara <laughs> that's very kind of you so my mom actually, oh, it's my favorite thing about going home. The first thing my mom says to me, I promise you, before she even greets me, she goes, do you have laundry? <laughs> it's so funny. I always laugh at that. And um, so I got her to wash my coat. And moms are amazing. So she washed it for me. And look how she fluffed up the faux, faux fur or whatever this is on the back there. Didn't you think it's nice? I said, mom, how did you get it that fluffy? And she said, I brushed it. Moms are just so great. She's made it look like brand new again, besides the fact that the khaki green color is well now faded. Oh, this also blends into the grass. I reckon, if, oh, hang on, Seb, should we lay in the grass? Yes, let's do it, because I haven't been silly yet. Let's see how well I actually camouflage. My socks don't match today. Well, they'd match, but they're not the right color. Let's see. Please don't be ticks or thorns. Or li oh yeah, or lions. I did sort of look. Do I, do I blend in? Wait, I have to hide the white. You don't know where I am? No. Am I, wear, am I good, wearing good guard colors then? <laughs> there we go. So I don't know if you should actually recommend people to wear khaki, especially if you're not one with the bush. 
Because imagine you go out and you trip and fall and something happens and you knock yourself out and you're laying on the ground and you're dressed in all these khaki colours, how would we ever find you? Be tragedy. Get lost for years. Alright, I also think it's time for a new hat. Mine's, it went from green to sort of a shade of mustard. I actually don't know what colour that is. But every time I ask uh, Kirsten, one of the directors, she says, no, I like your hat the most. So, I don't know. What do you think? Should we have a vote? Yay or nay? Should I get a new hat? Hashtag Safari Live. Next town trip. <laughs> what do you think, Seb? Matches, as soon as it's going to match my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come on lions. It's got it does have stories this hat. It has got many stories. <laughs> Mary Hens, you said that I've gone and laid in the dirt just after my mom has cleaned it. Yes, I know. I'm always I'm forever dirty. Uh, my clothes are constantly stained. Is lioness tracks again, so that's a good sign. Um, but but it's, I think my mom's so used to it. I think I was even dirtier than my brother. Sort of come back from school, my pants are full of mud or messed something on her. She some birdies. Hi, hornbills. I haven't even said hello to you. I'm so rude. Don't fly though. Thought we'd just very quickly say hello to the the red bull. Never mind, Seb. <laughs> They've flown. Let me go forward because I can see some white crested helmet trikes and I can hear oh, if Wendy go, Wendy go. I'm trying to go quietly so I don't upset the birds. Well, I think it's very really difficult to sneak up onto a bird. Mm. There they are, just in the distance. They're sort of flapping around quite a bit there. You might just see flashes of white and black. Those are the white crested helmet trikes. I'm looking forward to see, uh, seeing some Retz's helmet trikes. And I haven't seen them for a while. We hear them every now and then. But um, we don't often get to see them. And we've got a beautiful sort of... Oh, who's that? There, that's a chagra making that noise. One of the chagras. I don't know if you heard the beautiful call. I'm looking for little insects. That one on the left looked like it maybe got something. Very pretty birds. You hear it? I, think it might, I don't know which chagra that is. Either the um, brown crowned or the black. One of them. But you often see them together with the white crested helmet trikes. There's definitely some food parties moving through here. I don't think just one. I think a variety of them. Now, I was hoping, I'm just going to put some love ice on. Actually, there's a chagra there. I don't know if you can see it. Just where that guari tree is, is just behind it, and that fallen log sort of patch just in there. I think it's in there. There's one hopping, oh, it's just flown. Oh, no, don't worry. No, it's, it's flown off now on the spike thorn. What is that there? Oh my gosh, well spotted, Seb. We've got a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of uh, bush willow leaf when in doubt <laughs> no it did fly off but there's a couple of chagras flying around here there's loads and loads of birds and this is the first real sign of the sun we've actually had and quite nice all of a sudden I feel warm okay mm -hmm. I suspect though there's lots of vehicle activity oh that's exciting Oh, my life in Africa. Thank you so much. We're going to have to bring it out again because I haven't released it. You first actually identified this for me. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know why I didn't say it out loud, that maybe it's one of the lace wings. And then I was thinking, maybe it's a bit small. But you've said that this insect here is in fact a bearded lace wing. That's amazing. So well done. Thank you so much. I actually wouldn't have even known where to start. I probably would have looked at the lace wings though. But thank you so much for that. Very, very well done to you. That's incredible. Looks like it's even sort of mimicking a leaf blowing in the wind at the moment too. Antennas going, wings also moving just slightly. You are all so fantastic. You know, I really, you guys don't get enough credit. That is 
amazing that you managed to help me with that. Very exciting. I might actually keep it so I can take it back and show Tristan because I'm sure he'd like to have a look at this and I want to get his opinion to see if that I'm not going crazy and show him at the angle at which I saw it so he could also see the chameleon. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. We need that tape again. Hmm. I now have to do some repairs. Sorry. So there's a very important plastic cover that sort of protects or a lot of the fuses and also the relays and things like that. And if you bump the relays, the car won't start. So I need to make sure it doesn't don't get any dust in there. So I'm so sorry, but it's very important that I stick it. I tried to stick it again, but I didn't have the the very thick tape. So I'm just done a um, a little sort of semi bush fix for now and as soon as I get back to camp I'll get the big tape and I'll sort that out that'll be all right that should be all right for now and we'll sort that out a little bit later constantly repairing things here you can imagine rattling around on these roads uh, does cause quite, uh, quite a bit of distress to the vehicles and especially the way we drive them off road <laughs> All sorts of things are pulling out and breaking loose. Now, I don't know where these lions are actually. There was a one lioness track coming through here and it looked fairly fresh. So, I don't really know. Maybe they, maybe we'll just go into Chitwa from here. We'll jump back onto Gari Main again. Oh no, some kudu. We'll have a look at the kudu. And go a little bit further forward. They all seem to be very fluffy this morning. Oh, hang on. We'll actually have a look at this female. She didn't look too great, actually. Hi, girl. You look like you've got a bit of mange. What's wrong with you? Hi, girl. She doesn't look particularly healthy. In terms of weight and stuff, she's fine. As you can see there, a lot of sort of... It looks like she has got a bit of mange around her belly. And she's actually been quite accommodating. Because she's lifted her tail. There's an oxpecker under there. She's lifted it so the oxpecker could get in between those nether regions. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's trying to get rid of those big ticks. Now, I, I don't think it's going to pull it off. I think it's... A, is that a tick? No, I think it's actually... Maybe, no, that's not a tick. <laughs> that's, uh, from, from the angle that I was looking at, it looked like it was maybe a tick. Perhaps there's sort of tick larvae around there. And that's what it's getting. But she's being very obliging. I think she knows how important it is that you keep those sensitive areas uh, nice and clean. That's incredible. I've never seen an animal so obliging before. You can see she hasn't got the healthiest looking coat. She looks very, very scruffy. See that? But she's fine. Like I said, she's not particularly thin. She seems to be okay. <laughs> Ah, that's so funny. And she's warming up in the sun, I think, as well. But she'll be okay. These animals are tough, they're resilient. Mange is a natural thing. Uh, disease and parasites do come about, and they do take on uh, the animals that aren't necessarily the healthiest. Without that, there would be an overpopulation of sort of not the strongest animals out here. The predators can only take care of so many of them. And the rest, well, her ears actually look fairly healthy. She doesn't look like she's got lots of ticks in her ears. She must enjoy uh, the oxpeckers then. Perhaps she finds it therapeutic. Chewing away. That's so cool. That's a lovely shot. See that? I think she's in the best spot. How does the, all the antelope around here? Got the sun on her head, on her neck. She's looking back at the rest of the herd. Just making sure they haven't got out of hand. And for the zebra! We've got them! Seb, how great is that? We had their tracks earlier. Right, now if, I'm going to go forward for you so we can get them walking towards us. The fact that we've now got the zebra after we saw all their tracks, I'm hoping that the lions are going to be next small herd of them, not a particularly big herd. Let me see if I can find a gap in the bushes. Where are you going to walk down? Um, what do you think? I think they're going to come this way. 
So let me go a little bit further forward. It's always the hardest trying to anticipate where the animals are going to go. Now, are you going to eat there? or you? No, I, think, I don't think it's going to stay in that spot for very long. I think it's going to walk out into this gap. So we'll just be patient. And hopefully our patience will... Uh, supply us with an even better sighting than what we have now. Sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes you have to park in, at the beginning, not in the most favorable spot, because you know that once that animal takes three or four steps, it's going to be a, a magnificent sighting. And there is a big game path, and I think they're on the game path at the moment, and it actually winds just a little bit to the right. You may be able to see it, and then essentially they should come out into that open gap straight towards us. Well, that's a theory anyway. You can hear all the ox pickers have a listen to them. It's quite nice, actually. <laughs> I can't believe it's so funny, Obvious. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> uh, so in brackets, scratches. Yeah. Scratches the ox picker off the bird I'd like to be list. Really? Really? <laughs> Very funny. Hey, listen, someone's got to do those tough jobs, eh? Ox pickers don't mind. If it means a meal, they'll go anywhere. <laughs> that was really funny. The fact I thought it was a tick was even funnier, wasn't it? Of course, it's really starting nicely now, too. Turtle dove singing, ox pickers, of course. They're not going to walk on the game path, they're going to walk behind us. Don't be, come on now, but it's fine, it's still a relatively open gap. Stallion, you don't seem to be too sure about us, do you? Even if you are the stallion. I can't see from here, it's hard. The rest of them will hopefully come out. Yeah, there comes another one. Very shy animals, the zebra. They're very, very, sort of very careful about what they do. I'm not going to move around too much, I don't know, they're not, they're... Relax. They're not particularly um, calm today. I don't think that this is the McCurdy Hurdy because I would not be treated like that by my fellow family. Let me put my foot on the. I thought I was going to roll forward for you. <laughs> okay, let me try reposition quickly, just a little bit. There we go. That's a bit better. What's wrong? Can you smell lions? Wouldn't surprise me if they could. They've definitely been moving through this area and we haven't had any rain to wash their scent away. Maybe that's why they're slightly on edge. But there's a quite a, not a big herd, maybe there's about five or six of them moving through here. And hopefully the rest of them are going to come through shortly. I can just see them at the back of their heads tucked into the lovely yellow grass that I'm sure is so delicious. You'd rather you than me, Zebra. And I love the, these winter colors. I love the oranges and the yellows and the oxpeckers just landing on the Zebra. Lots of them around here. And there's a variety of animals too, like I was saying. We saw the Kudu, we saw the Zebra. I didn't show you the Impala, however, but there was a herd of Impala moving through with the Kudu. And I think they should be fairly safe. My goodness, you've got, could you have got fantastic eyesight and even better hearing? Of course, the zebra have got outstanding eyesight, and uh, well, so do the impala. So I think between the three different species, and then of course you've got some eyes in the sky in the form of the oxpeckers and the hornbills and things that are following them around, and the drongos, so they'll also alert them of any predator presence. Oh, wow. Are they going to come through? <laughs> 